All right. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of FinTech Fridays. Brian View, President, Chief Operating Officer here at FinLocker. And I've got Dale Larson joining me once again from Modex. Dale, this is your uh, second time on, on our little podcast. Thanks for coming back on. Yeah, certainly. Thanks for having me. So I, I, I reached out to you because I, I remembered when we talked the first time, we were in a completely different environment. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, all kinds of different environments, by the way. Uh, you know, yeah. the market was different in terms of mortgage. We, I think when we talked, we were just starting to see the impact of the pandemic and rates mm -hmm. were falling and you were sharing kind of how your platform helps folks find the, those productive loan officers so they can grow into. And here we are almost probably two years after we talked for the first time. I think so. Yeah. And like uh, we're not in that same market. We've, I, I heard a rumor that the pandemic was over, so that's cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and clearly the mortgage market is, is way different today than it was two years ago. And I thought it'd be great just to kind of get your perspective because you sit on a really a rich set of data that I mm -hmm. think we can kind of peel, peel back a few layers to help maybe tell the story and hopefully shed some light on perhaps where things are headed. So again, welcome back. And uh, it's great to have you back. Why don't you, why don't you start Dale by just reminding those of uh, our listeners and viewers that aren't as familiar with Modex mm -hmm. as others, just who Modex is, um, you know, how you guys kind of started and, and what you do for the industry. Yeah, certainly. So it's a, it's a Modex.com. We're a, um, uh, mortgage data analytics and marketplace, pretty much uh, primarily focused on recruiting. Okay, uh, we, we've now backed into the fact that we can support what I call parallel industries. So other industries that support mortgage, so that'd be like title, non-QM, wholesale, real estate, et cetera. But really our, our, our primary use case is still about mortgage recruiting. Um, based in Washington state, um, and still even experiencing growth during this kind of interesting period that we're in today. Um, really, the, the brief history of Modex, and it's really funny, um, I'll try and keep this as short as I can. I find myself more and more like my dad. And, um, <laughs> and my dad's in the business. I'll be able to talk about that in a moment. But my dad is a notorious and very well uh, storyteller. And I, I just, gosh, I find myself telling more stories. And so I got to rein myself in, which is so <laughs> funny. But um, anyway, so really, the, the business was founded by both my dad and I. So I'm Dale the third. My dad's Dale Jr. Uh, I'm CEO, and he's uh, chairman of the board. We're co-founders together. And my dad has... And, and I'll interchangeably use dad and Dale Jr. But yeah. um, uh, my dad has um, leadership experience in mortgage here in Washington State in the Pacific Northwest for like 30 years or so, maybe even longer. And so growing up, I was in and around his businesses. I've never been an originator myself, but I, I've always loved technology. And so really seeing what my dad has done of growing businesses and, and, and acquisitions and M&A and stuff like that, um, you know, in, in college, maybe 15 years or 10 or 15 years ago, I told him, hey, um, let's, let's do what you're doing, but let's bring in some good technology and data. And that was really the impetus for Modex, right? So that, that's how we came about. Um, we're, we're st like I said, primarily in recruiting. Um, yep. and, and there's two things to that one that's providing data to employers to identify the best loan officers to hire, whatever the best may be, right? So the best is not always the highest producer. It, it might be a mediocre producer, might be based on geography, uh, percent of their business, et cetera. But um, doing that. And then secondly, um, kind of what you had alluded to at the beginning of our call here is uh, something we call Modex Profiles. We're not going to talk too much about it today, but really it's a marketplace where um, both loan officers and employers backed by just a proper ton of data uh, can identify each other, express interest in each other, and then kind of start that hiring dance uh, yeah. to get employed. So we have a new version of that rolling out. But um, yeah, that's kind of uh, in short what we do. I love it. Yeah. I mean, it's such a, you know, when we first talked at the, at the time, like I said, the industry was scrambling to add capacity, right? To add capacity to keep up with the demand. And now we're kind of on the other side of it. But I think I would just be curious from your perspective, you know, in terms of the customers that you work with and, and even the prospective customers, what are the, like, what are the, what are the hot buttons that they're trying to solve for right now? Because you kind of hit on something. It, the right loan officer may not necessarily equate to the highest producing loan officer, right? It's what's mm -hmm. going to fit my model, 
and what I'm trying to solve for as as a hiring manager or a company? Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's some really simple ones, right? Like super uh, cl uh, client retention, loan officers are much less interesting now. And then loan officers who are just doing heavy refinance, right? And haven't recovered from that. So lots of loan officers that have um, strong referral partners, a good purchase pipeline, established books of business and referral business from existing for past clients. Um, there seems to be a big uh, gearing towards that. Um, I have a, a friend or a work acquaintance who works for a I don't know, top 10 lender. He's a recruiter. And what he told me recently is, you know, there, the data that Modex provides is important right now. Right now is a great time to make hires, right? There are loan officers that are scrambling for jobs. It's an interesting environment. So there's a lot of very talented originators out there. Um, but also right now is a terrible time to make a poor hire, right? Yeah. So uh, really leveraging data like Modex, it, right now is a good time to do that. And then across just, you know, your question on what our clients and prospective clients, um, my opinions and what I'm seeing in the market right now, banks are still fairly strong. We're not going to talk about SVB and First Republic and all those fun <laughs> yeah. folks, but um, banks seem, um, you know, they're more distributed in their revenue streams. So our, our bank clients, credit union clients seem to be a little stronger right now. Um, and then it's the larger lenders who were had an eye towards the market we've come into now, the purchase market, um, or the leaving of the refinance boom, if you want to call it that even. Um, yeah. They seem um, better um, prepared for this market, right? So um, I don't want to name names, but there yeah. are some companies that, you know, pre pre pandemic or even in the pandemic, they were still doing more than 50% purchase. Yep. Uh, those guys are super strong in the market today. Um, the smaller lenders, um, again, we're in the recruiting realm, so uh, they've kind of scaled back recruiting. But, you know, I would say banks and big lenders who have stayed, you know, within a decent amount of purchase business are, they're still, they're still ranking. They're still yeah. doing business. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's um, before we hit record, you and I were just kind of having a little catch up, but we were, you know, we're talking about the reality of the consumer mindset around interest rates, right? And so mm -hmm. we, you know, for, for right or wrong, you and I are consumers as well. And yes, we won't, I won't, I won't ask you to compare interest rates, but I probably have the lower one than you. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, I don't know about um, that. We'll see. <laughs> we can talk afterwards. The, yeah, the uh, but consumers for a while got kind of, you know, the, the reality wasn't the reality. And they, they there was this feeling that a, a two or a three or maybe even a four interest mm -hmm. rate is the normal and it's not yeah. the normal it's that was a blip on the overall radar if you look at it across you know 30 some years mm -hmm. and a five six percent rate or somewhere in that you know call it 150 basis point range is probably a healthy rate for the the overall economy and and still uh -huh. and still is a uh a good rate for buying a home and especially mm -hmm. for first-time home buyers so yeah, I, I'm curious if 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 you're starting to kind of see in the data, or at least in the interactions that the the lenders and and then the LOs that you're engaged with are are kind of starting to feel like there's a little bit of normalcy coming back in terms of look at people are always going to buy and sell homes. That's just reality, right? It's right. it's the scale of or the number of of homes that happen that that really drives the volume. Just curious what what you're kind of seeing from an anecdotal perspective. Yeah, I think anecdotally, I think um, anecdotally, there we go. That's the right word. Um, <laughs> I, I still think producers who have a big book of business from previous clients are still strong. It's the folks who were, who I mean, the folks who got into the industry during the pandemic. Um, I, I hope they made their boom of money and now they've scaled back because that, that kind of mentality of like, hey, I'm going to get in because there's a lot of money here. That's not going to work now. Um, I think when I look at companies, companies really are going towards recruiting now because that's how they can increase their production, their overall yeah. production. Um, it's it, it's my opinion. It's challenging right now to do more marketing, more open houses, better CRM work to bring in more business right now. You can't do yeah. more SEO and internet advertising and social media advertising to get more business right now. It's, hey, I got to bring in more well-established loan officers who have previous books of business to bring in more business. So, right. um for the smaller loan officers, um, I still think there's a lot of opportunity out there, but it's you're gonna have to be a little more scrappy than maybe the folks who are more established. If that makes sense. Yeah. 
So from a, uh, again, let's, let's maybe highlight a little bit of the power of the data that, that you yeah. sit on. Cause I think once we do that, there's a couple talking points I'd like to kind of poke at around that data. So maybe describe for the, the audience kind of, you know, the richness of the data that you, your platform is, is kind of operating on. And then, and then we'll see if we can't tell a story from that data. Yeah, certainly. So I think, you know, Modex ingests a fairly standard set of data. It's what we do with it that I think makes us different, right? So we're ingesting licensing data. So I know uh, generally every loan officer branch and company in the United States, including Modex is the only platform that is generating uh, branches for federally registered companies. Okay, so for folks that don't know mortgage licensing, and again, I'll try and be brief on this, um, your state licensed lenders, your, your calibers, guilds, APMs, et cetera, they have to license the company, the branch, and the loan officer, right? So all three tiers. When it comes to banks, credit unions, depositories, et cetera, they're federally registered and they actually only have to register their company and their loan officers, right? So there's no that there's not an intermediary branch. So uh, Modex creates some derivative data and I'll be able to talk a little bit about that further uh, around those branches and we're the only platform doing that, right? So we have tons of licensing data, uh, lots of historical licensing data. We have, um, I call it mortgage transactional data. People might call it public record data. And that's going to be data on individual loan transactions happening around the country. We have our own quality assurance and quality control processes that we have on top of uh, the data that we get. So we have really good data. Um, and then we also, in the last year or so, started ingesting uh, MLS or real estate data, right? So we get MLS uh, data across 230 plus MLSs in the country. Um, that's still a newer product for us, um, but we have deployed that to many clients so they can start playing with it, right? So we have all this data and, and it's, it's interesting to play a game of connected dots to see, okay, what transaction goes with which, that goes with what loan officer, what branch, what company, and you can kind of roll it all up. That's, that's helpful. Um, I think providing context to the data is also important, right? So it's like, hey, here's a loan officer that did uh, $100 million last year. Okay, that looks great if we just look at the aggregate numbers. But, you know, if I told you that loan officer wasn't a call center or a client retention, you would probably look at that loan officer much differently, right? So Modex doesn't just say, hey, here are the numbers for this loan officer. We're providing that, that we, we would call it derivative data, right? So we're providing the context to say, hey, this loan officer is a broker, they're consumer direct, they're, you know, whatever. There's a bunch of different things we would apply it to. So we help track that information out. Um, and then recently um, we started leveraging um, through multiple data sets, uh, employment data, right? So we're starting to track uh, and this has application internally. That's actually the, the, why we built it. The application of it is in Modex profiles, and there's a whole story around that, which we can save for another time. But um, essentially what we're doing is we are tracking um, where loan officers are, where they came from, and where they're going. Right. So at almost any given point in time, I can tell you um, at the geography level, branch, and company level who the loan officers are that are there, where they came from, so where was their firm, former employer, and then where they – you know, if they've left that company, like where they went to. So I could tell yeah. you, hey, this this branch is growing, they're declining, they're losing lots of loan officers to this branch or this other company, or uh, they've entirely left the industry. So there's a lot of uh, data that we're excited about around that as well, especially in this market where loan officers who are in the industry are declining, right? And, yeah. and people are switching from IMBs to brokers. And it's just like, it's really interesting to see that dynamic unfold with evidentiary data. Yeah, so let's and, and but just for for uh, uh, disclosure, you and I are not picking winners. We're not saying no. <laughs> channel A is better than channel B. This is this is uh, this question is yes. first of all, I'm just super interested in the in in kind of what's going on. But like from an overall theme perspective, based on kind of what you're seeing in the data, what kind of shifts or um, uh, trends are you seeing in terms of where loan officers are going to, coming from, et cetera. And, and uh, that's my first question. We'll, 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 we'll go deeper after that. Yeah, you know, Brian, it's a, it's a little hard for me to say exactly right now. I don't have the, the, the data in front of me to go kind of into that. Um, but, you know, I, I can tell you, I mean, uh, let me think here. How do I phrase this? I mean, if I look globally, if you want to use that word globally, if we're going to look at loan officers last year. So we're going to look at producing loan officers. So last year, if we were to look at all producing loan officers, so January 2022, uh, the U.S. had about 338,000 uh, producing loan officers. And how I've identified producing is means they've done one or more transactions in the last 12 months. Okay, so we're yep. looking at 2021. Um, 
ending last year, so December 2022, um, we ended at about 314,000. Okay, so we lost about what is that? Um, a little bit more than 20,000 loan officers, and those are folks that have left the industry. And that's a that's also a producing loan officers, right? One yeah. of the anomalies across the industry is uh, banks, um, banks and credit unions. So often a bank or credit union will register uh, thousands or even tens of thousands of, of loan officers for compliance purposes. Yeah. Um, when in reality, there's only a couple that do any production. Like again, we're not right. picking favorites, but like the Wells Fargo's, the B of A's, they maybe have 20 or 30,000 registered loan officers. When in reality, if you look at the data, there's only like two or 3,000 that do any production. So right. um, when we're, you know, we're just looking at those numbers I'd said earlier, you know, the 338,000 and the 314,000, those are of producing loan officers. Yep. Um, you know, we, we lost more than I think, what was it? 20,000, almost 25,000 loan officers over the course of last year. Um, which really, if I, I'm looking at the data right now, um, yeah. really started to kind of kick in. Um, probably, let's see, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. I mean, it's kind of around July last year, right? When the Fed started to raise yeah. rates. That's really when loan officers started to fall off and then it kind of declined fairly quickly from there. Um, on, on the other end, I can also see arrivals and departures, right? So that's that's what we're calling loan officers that are arriving at companies and then loan officers that are depart departing companies. Um, when you depart a company, you can either be departing for a new company or you can be departing the industry in its entirety, right? And so I can right. tell you, you know, beginning last year, so January 2022 again, um, there were uh, 7,000 loan officers that departed. Again, that could be uh, departed their company to a new company or departed the industry entirely. Um, while we ended last year with about uh, nearly 12,000 loan officers departed um, in December of last year. So it is it is a very, uh, I feel like this is such a buzzword word, but I'll still use it. It is a very fluid market. Yeah. Um, and it's, it, it changes day by day. So, yeah. How... Um... This is more curiosity just on the data set. How, sure. like, what's the time, like, what's the most recent month's worth of data that you look at? Is it, you know, are you 90 days back or approximately? So when, when we talk about employment data, employment yeah. data is up until we last refreshed our data. So, again, I, I don't have the data in front of me to talk about it right now. But uh, given that we refresh our employment data generally around the first of the month, I would have okay. data for... A, like the end, like May 1st back, like yeah. uh, tens and t a long time. Um, yeah. I don't think you're asking this, but just so people know, um, uh, transactional data depends on the county. Uh, generally, we tell clients there's about a four to six week lag time, but it depends. And then MLS yeah. data, uh, kind of a similar situation. So, yeah. Yeah. And, so on the MLS pretty... data. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, go sorry. ahead. No, you go, oh, ahead. go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, uh, the MLS data, yeah, it, it depends on the MLS and uh, how to re refresh our data and stuff like that. So right. it varies. Are there any other like themes or or trends that that you've started to see or maybe started to see coming into this new year that continue to kind of uh, tell a story about you know where where loan officers are are going and. The second question on that, a piggyback question would be, I'm curious about like new arrivals, right? So yeah. Yeah. clearly in the, in the pandemic, there was this influx of new people into the business. I'm just curious mm -hmm. if that is it's probably not completely shut off, but it's probably significantly, it's gotta be significantly lower. I mean. Um, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, significantly lower, if not almost to a complete halt. Um, yeah. Again, I don't have the most recent data for like April available to me, but um, it, it's it's significantly slowed down. And then the movement of loan officers has uh, just been kind of variable. So folks who are in the industry and have been in the industry for a while, more established, I mean, watching them switch jobs has been varied. I, I couldn't tell you how that's going to switch over the course of the year, right? As yeah. rates get better or worse, but um, it, it's certainly moving around. One thing, and you didn't ask this specifically, but it is an insight that I... I feel like is relevant. I have my opinion. Um, I feel like I have seen an uptick in non-QM. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I feel like there's a lot more non-QM activity going on. That's something we track as well. We call it lender beneficiaries. Yeah. So we track wholesale. Uh, oh, the overall umbrella would be wholesale, right? And so then yeah. non-QM kind of fits under that umbrella. Um, there's a lot more of that going on. Um, a lot more from our clients in non-QM. 
a lot more interest in Modex from a non-QM perspective. And I think that's fairly new. Um, you know, our data has traditionally been for recruiting and we are very much on the recruiting path, but right. uh, our data can also be leveraged for sales prospecting. It's like, hey, if, if you're a non-QM lender, uh, wouldn't you want to know what loan officers are using your competitors' products? I mean, yeah. if you're an AE at a, at a non-QM shop, I mean, that is, it's a gold mine of data. It's if you, have, yeah. if you actually have a better product than your competitor, I can tell you, hey, here's, here, here's who you need to talk to, right? And I also right. can filter out uh, your current company, so you, you can eliminate kind of current clients from those filters as well. But um, in, in my opinion on the non-QM stuff is it, it's just the market, right? People are making yeah. money differently. They have different assets. And so the conventional conforming mortgage, uh, you know, the, the guidelines that the government hands us are not always applicable in this market. And so non-QM right. needs to step in to kind of pick up that slack, I guess. Yeah, I mean that was the whole, you know, that was the whole thought process. Uh, you know, I lived through kind of, you know, Alte and non-prime and all that fun stuff. And mm -hmm. the, the non-QM that we kind of know today, I don't think falls into the the you know the negative connotation of Alte and, and subprime. Yep. Uh, and there there's been a desire by the regulators to have the private sector play more of a role in mortgage lending, right? And so mm -hmm. in the jumbo space as an example and non-QM. And so I don't think you'll see, well, I know we're not seeing, you know, the agencies, Fannie and Freddie specifically, come rushing back in to create liquidity for non-QM. That's just not gonna happen like it happened right. back in the in the 2006, seven and eight timeline. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and it's there's good product and good borrowers and, and it's, it's kind of old fashioned lending, really, when you think about yep. it. It's uh, a lot of cash flow analysis and mm -hmm. uh, probably more, you know, some of the more sound underwriting guidelines that 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 you would you would kind of imagine if you were to rewrite the playbook. Um, yep. Well, how I'm curious, what is like, how do you identify a non QM loan at the transaction level from a agency loan? None, that that's a really good question, and that's a question that's often asked of me. And I'll, I'll here's here's my I'll give you an honest answer. I can't. Okay. Um, it's 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 actually impossible. And anyone who tells you that they can, um, either they're in my opinion again they're lying, or um, they've kind of found a unicorn way to do something. Um, uh, non QM is looking at the borrower, in my opinion, right? It's their ethnicity or not their it's their nationality. It's their occupation, it's their income, it's their assets. Yeah. Um, and none of that gets recorded to public record, right? And if someone has that data, um, yeah. it very well could be an FCRA violation, right? Like I, <laughs> you got bigger problems then. Um, how, how Modex goes about identifying non-QM is we look at the lender, right? So if we conclusively know Angel Oak Home Loans, Lender, yeah. Home Express, et cetera, if we know they are a non-QM shop, we then identify, hey, these are likely non-QM loans. And, and yeah. Modex doesn't make that decision on behalf of their clients. We allow them to select. It's, it's not like yeah. we go through our database and say, hey, these are non-QM. We just say, hey, here was the lender who financed them. And so if our clients want to come in there and say, hey, well, we think New Res is non-QM, while someone yeah. else might say, well, New Res is not non-QM, um, we allow our clients to kind of make that decision themselves. So identifying non-QM is really tricky unless you're looking at the lender and you conclusively yeah. know that the lender does only non-QM. There are some other means that I've talked to some people about to identify non-QM. It wouldn't be conclusive, but um, trade secret, I can't talk about it right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good good stuff there. Any Anything else, what, like what's coming down the pipe? What are you guys working on that people can kind of, uh, should pay attention to from Modex here through the rest of the year? You know, our the original idea behind Modex was profiles. And really that's allowing loan officers to claim profiles, allowing employers to claim profiles, and allowing them to find each other in a way that's confidential and comfortable for everyone. So um, we've always been able to do that. Um, it's just been honestly not the greatest experience. Uh, so we have new version of profiles rolling out here imminently. Um, and, and we think that's gonna be a big deal. So uh, we will continue to be a data provider and provide all the insights and all that stuff. But you know th that was always a secondary project for us. So we're very yeah. excited to be rolling that back out um, kind of in its new fashion. This employment data I'm talking about, I mean, there's always questions about 
is the broker market growing? Is the IMB market growing? Are credit unions growing? How are different companies performing, not only at the production level, but at the employment level? Um, yeah. You know, we're going to start surfacing all those insights to our clients here soon. Um, and beyond that, we got all kinds of fun stuff we've been thinking about. We've been thinking about compliance. Uh, we've been working on something maybe called the insights engine where uh, my engineers are going to love this. Uh, it's reporting on anything at any time across any time frame, uh, which is just an obnoxious request from an engineering technical standpoint, sure. which is why they may laugh at that when they get <laughs> some lift from them. But um, very excited to be doing that. It's like, hey, you know, give me a notification when Dale switches to a new employer. Hey, give me a notification when Dale gets a new license somewhere. Hey, give me a notification when Dale leaves the industry. Um, yeah. So, again, kind of really going in on, on, on derivative data. Uh, also, sorry, one more thing. One thing I've noticed amongst clients that, that I think is interesting insight is the uh, consolidation of, of technology tools, right? We're trying to streamline things, and, and perhaps you've encountered this at Finlocker. Um, you know, people don't want to go into their dialer, and then they want to go into their CRM, and then they want to go into Modex, and then they want to, you know, th they want to do everything in one system. And, and I, honestly, I don't think Modex is that one system, but I think we're a component of that. And so we have clients who very often say, hey, I want you to integrate into our CRM because yeah. our CRM is our dialer, our CRM, Modex prospecting data, our email function, everything. So I think there's a lot of that going on. And yeah. I think that does streamline and make people more efficient, whether it's your recruiters or your AEs in the wholesale space. There's a lot of that going on. Um, yeah, I agree. And we do that. We, we're, we're kind of right in the middle of that with our product, right? So we are often are, are asked to, you know, can we integrate to the CRM on one end? Can we integrate to the point of sale mm -hmm. on the other end or, or uh, even the servicing system? And so I, I agree. I think with, with, with the slow, you know, with business being slower, people are trying to figure out how to, how to do more with less. And sometimes less yeah. is less tech. And yeah. so um, if you can integrate with, you know, if you can put two uh, pieces of tech together, uh -huh. And you can eliminate another platform that you're using that, that just, you know, provided a sliver. I think you're going to see a ton of that. And what's mm -hmm. been cool, though, is is um, is platforms are collaborating. A lot of people are yes. interested in collaborating to make a more efficient, you know, kind of tech stack and experience for the mutual clients that that we all serve. So I don't I don't feel like. There's a lot of people like, you know, hiding and hoarding their stuff and not wanting to connect to other platforms. It feels like people are generally trying to do do things better and more efficiently for the originators that we all serve. Yeah, I'll, I'll share something. And I, I don't know if I should share this. Uh, recently, I actually talked to two CEOs of, of competitors of ours, like direct competitors. And I won't say who they are, but um, really going along the lines of collaboration. It's like, yeah. hey. We do some stuff really good and you guys do some stuff good. You know, what, what would it look like if we did things better together um, yeah. across us? Um, you know, again, it's like CRMs. It's like, hey, I was talking to, I was talking to Optify now this morning, uh, yeah. Cook. And, um, you know, it was like, hey, Modex has phenomenal data. I don't want to build a CRM. You know, Optify now has a great CRM for wholesalers. Um, you know, we should be working together. So yeah, yeah, I see a lot of that, and I think it it benefits everyone. It benefits me, benefits whoever I'm partnering with, and then it, it can yep. benefit the end user, the client. So I see that. Yeah, too. My, I I think we're going to see kind of that carry through the rest of this year. And mm -hmm. um, you know, you, we had a a lot of new tech come into our industry, you know, kind mm -hmm. of pre-pandemic and in the first mm -hmm. part of the pandemic. And um, there's a lot of good tech that came in that's challenging kind of some of the legacy tech, and so. Oh, yeah. Um, I do think you're we're going to see you know see continued collaboration and integrations where they where they make sense. Well, Dale, this was awesome. It's always good to catch up and and yeah, learn likewise. kind of uh, great you know new great things that that companies like Modex are doing. I appreciate you spending some time with me today. And um, if our audience wants to to connect with you, Modex.com, I'm assuming is the place to go, right? That's right. That's the best place to find us. We have a new website launching soon. Uh, our right. website hasn't been updated in like five years. So like half the okay. products I've talked about or you've heard about from us, they're not even on our website. So um, please visit our website, contact us via our website, but we have a new website launching soon as well. So yeah. congrats. Well, thank you. Congrats on everything. It's I, like I said, I've been kind of following you guys for a while. I love, I love, uh, 
love the fact that we're still here. <laughs> we're still here fighting the good fight through this, yeah. this, uh, environment. And, uh, we'll have you back on maybe, uh, maybe inside of the next year and just kind of give an update on, on all the great things over at Modex. So thanks again for joining Dale, yep. uh, audience. Thanks for coming on. Uh, enjoy your weekend and come back next Friday for FinTech Fridays. Thank you.